It's been a while, but welcome back to the Big Dog Post Game Show after the Terps take down Michigan State in the Big Ten tournament, sixty-eight to fifty-seven. Mason Viner and Bruce Posner. Bruce, uh, initial thoughts on what was a dominating second half from the Terps? Listen, uh, I have to tell you, I'm not surprised or shocked that Maryland won. It was kind of like a pick and game. It kind of went back and forth as far as who was favorite, who was underdog. But the way that Maryland won, it was almost a carbon copy of the first match. Maryland just out defensed them uh, to the end. And, you know, they fell behind. And, you know, it's funny, Mason. I don't know if I was talking about with you on the air or Todd, but I did say that sometimes when you get way behind and you're able to come back and get that lead, it's like your confidence grows and the other team collapses. Look, Maryland blew, what, a not 11 nothing in a 12 nothing game to two, I don't want to say pretty bad teams, but teams they should beat. And then they come back today, they're down 23 to 11. And from that point on, uh, till it was 57 to 40, it was ridiculous. You're talking uh, 46 to 20 or whatever, or to yeah. 17. It was crazy. And it, Listen, when Maryland had the 17-point lead, that was it. They weren't going to blow a 17-point lead in seven minutes. And it's funny that Daryl Morsell, who played great defensively against Aaron Henry, he just played unbelievable. Henry didn't get his points to the end of the game. At one point, I think he was about three for 10 from the field. And one of the baskets wasn't against uh, Morsell. But Morsell hit a tray and mm -hmm. then a driving layup to put the game away when they had closed the gap to about seven or eight, he went boom, boom. And in essence, the game was over and you could see the frustration and the inner bickering between Michigan state. I think they were shocked to lose again to us to tell you the truth. And I think it's, it's really surprising given the way that Maryland's been playing that Michigan state really got rolled in the, in the second half of this game more. So you mentioned him 31 minutes, for Daryl, 7.7 .7 boards, two assists. He, he's that guy that, and you and I were talking about this on the air yesterday, he's that kind of guy that it doesn't really show up on the stat book, but he's a defensive player of the year of the conference. He's an absolute shutdown guy, and he's just the heart of the team. He also sets the tone. Uh, without question, he sets the tone for the defense, and he's just been, uh, he's been awesome. Uh, look, here's the bottom line. A lot of us did not expect Maryland to win today. And I, you know, I didn't do it. I mean, I just didn't think every time we faced Izzo in this situation, Mason, how many times have we come up empty? Last year, Izzo comes in, we win, we clinch undisputed Big Ten championship after we killed them up in uh, Michigan. They come in and they just whomp us from gate to wire. It, it, it never stops. And it didn't happen today, though, and I can't wait to see his, his press conference. But Maryland, it was just a beatdown. It really was. I don't want to see him again. I don't care how bad we dominated him. I don't want to see him again. They're definitely in the tournament. They beat Michigan. They beat Ohio State. They beat uh, they beat everybody, basically. Even their wins are more impressive than Maryland. I, I don't know if they were back in Tier 1, but it could be another Tier 1 win for Maryland. But going into the game today... Michigan was definitely in. Maryland was probably in. Had Maryland lost the way that Michigan State lost today, yeah. it could have been problematic. One or two point game with the matter. Okay, but an 11 point loss that really wasn't that close could have been a problem for Maryland, but they didn't. And let's go down the list. Uh, I thought Hakeem Hart came back a little bit offensively. He only he contributed five points, but they were strong. And what can we say about that yellow, you know, back to 21 points, you know? and Yeah, they needed Eric to play well in this game. And, and they it, he's the guy that they need to play well. And, you know, Jack and I go back and forth about this on the podcast, and he said it and written it on TurpTalk.com throughout the season. They need Ayella, Wiggins, Morsell to play well. Those are your guys that you got to rely on. And, you and Scott. Throw, and, and Scott. You can throw Scott in there. That's what I was just going to say, but he hasn't been there really as of recent he gave him seven points and three boards uh today but they need that core guys to play well and then they need one of these jarius hamiltons your galen smiths your hakeem hearts to step up and today when you look at the stat line it 
to me, at least, Bruce, and, and you and I can go back and forth on this one, if you show me this set of stats, I don't think they win this game. I would refer Jack Litch Law Group to anyone that I know because of their professional touch and they get the job done. They get it done timely and they do it right. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust and we have with great results and great service. So call the big dogs right now, don't wait. Find us online at bigdogssmallfirm.com. No, it looks like it's a dead even match. Even, you know, Maryland 21 for 55, they did not shoot well. If they had shot well in the second half, they'd have been up at 27. I mean, Michigan didn't score. They scored two points, I think, in mm -hmm. nine minutes. Yeah. And Maryland was only up by 10. And going back to the stats and, and why I said what I just said, they were 21 of 55 overall. They only shot at 38% from the floor, six of 20 from three, and 20 of 28 from the free throw line. If you showed me that they missed eight free throws in this game, that's my key stat. I would have told you they lost, but Michigan State kind of gave that right back to them. 22 of 53 from the floor, four of 16 from three, and nine of 18 from the line. And neither one of these teams played a great offensive game, but Maryland's defense just suffocates you when they're playing it well and when they're a high-energy basketball team. Uh, I got to be honest, if I'm another team in the NCAA tournament hanging right around that 8, 9, 10 line, I don't want to see Maryland in the first round. I don't want to see Maryland. Maryland. Mason, don't you believe that this win might project Maryland into a seven seed? I mean, to say Maryland's not one of the top 30 teams in the country, I think is ridiculous. Yeah, you could tell me they're not a top 10, and I'll agree with you. Maybe not even a top 15, but uh, their Ken Palm is 29 or 20. They'll be up probably 29 or 28 now. And to me, they should be locked into a seven seed, and we need to avoid that nine, uh, eight, eight, nine seed. It's just that simple. I, I will agree with you based on what happens tomorrow. Uh, I think tomorrow is an important game, not that they win, but that they compete for at least three quarters of the game. No, they I need think to that's, be in the that's game. The difference I think they... Because between today and tomorrow, today for the ACC, tomorrow for the Big Ten, and I believe the Big Ten and the SEC, it is one of the most important committee days of the year. You know, Patrick Stevens was on the radio this morning when I was driving into work, and he was talking about how that Big Ten championship game never has a huge effect because it's so late. The games that matter are today, tomorrow, depending on what conference you're in, and Saturday. Those are your big games. So tomorrow you have to show out and put out another good performance. Then I think the way things are breaking right now, I can see them on the seven seed. They're definitely an eight or nine. Uh, but I really want to see him either a 10 or a seven. And I think the 10 is, I think the 10 uh, scenario is pretty much gone at this point. So I'm hoping uh, that Maryland pushes up to a seven seed. Well, you know, it's a big difference. Uh, I think, what are they now? 16 and 12. Does that sound right? Yeah, that is what they are. 16 and 12. And had they lost, they would have been 15 and 13. Doesn't mm -hmm. look good. They probably would have gotten the bid because of the quality of win. And you even take a team like Duke, which is real. You know, I'm not a Duke fan, to say the least. But it's really sad that they're not playing. Because I think they might have won that tournament. The ACC, you know, I think if they got past Florida State, mm -hmm. there was a darn good chance they could win that tournament. And it's just a shame that they get knocked out. And they're not, they're not going to get an at-large bid because – they weren't even near it, but maybe they'll be. Well, who knows if they can even play, even if they got one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at this point, I don't know. I think they'll be ready by next Thursday. That's mm -hmm. a long time. It is. Right? It is. And you only have to have six players. You only have to have six players. Yeah. You know? And that's fair. And they would have played with six uh, if they had to. But coming back around to the Terps, going into tomorrow, Bruce, uh, what's your expectation as we kind of wrap up, uh, I guess, bringing back the big dog post game show here on the Wayne Terp YouTube channel and terptalk.com. Well, I got to tell you, I look at that game and it's like, we're on house money now. All right. We have a chance to pull a major, major upset tomorrow. Will we do it? Who in the hell knows? But I, you know, after watching the Penn state game and the uh, Northwestern game, it's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's who shows up. You know, they're going to have to shoot well tomorrow because, mm -hmm. you know, Dickerson's going to get his points, but Dickerson's going to learn what it's like to be triple team tomorrow. And if the, and if Wagner and uh, their other shooter do well, we're probably going to go down. I mean, let's be realistic, but 
Uh, if they can bring that intensity. And, you know, one guy we didn't mention that we have to, nine points from uh, uh, Jarius Hamilton. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was huge. That He hit two threes that weighed a ton. And I, I'm watching that game, and I'm seeing, you know, 31 to 30. Uh, Ayala hits a three at the buzzer, 34 to 30. And we go up 40 to 30. It stays that way for five minutes. I don't know if you're aware of that. Five minutes, it was 40 to 30. Then Michigan State makes a little run, not much of a run. I think they got it down to eight. And then Marcel hits the three, and Marcel hits that driving layup. And for all intents and purposes, the game was over. You're up by 17 with seven minutes left, and you're playing fantastic defense. You're not going to lose now. You know, when you're, if each team was scoring 100 points, you can recover from a 17 point deficit. But the way that Michigan State was shooting, you know, I, I can't believe Michigan State. I watched them against Michigan and they were unbelievable. Of course, that was at home. But then they come here, they come to play Maryland. And I think, uh, I think I was talking to Scott Green after the game and he said that Maryland provided a horrible matchup for Michigan State. And uh, uh, when Joey Hauser got in a little foul trouble, mm-hmm. they lost their big guy. And they, you know, normally- And he can also shoot going- it. So, so there's, there's the other important thing about Hauser. And, and from watching Michigan State these last couple of weeks, him being able to shoot the basketball is so important to their team because you, you got to start facing the music if you're Michigan State. Rocket Watts is taking a step backwards. Uh, Langford's just not really there this year. They need Hauser for for a handful of reasons. He's the big man; he can shoot it. And, and you know, yeah, you're right. Once once he's gets in foul trouble, they're they're dangerous, dangerous territory. Because if you remember back to the Maryland Michigan State game before, that other big man hadn't scored. And I think it was two weeks before he had a couple points against Maryland. Yeah. Well, we look at Langford and Rocket Watts, and they combined for one for thirteen from the field that would tell you that Maryland was going to win. I mean, Aaron Henry was five for 12, but I think three of the shots were down the wire. He was really stopped by Morcell after beating him like on the first play, but Hey, Maryland won. It was a big win. I, you know what? First thing I hear is all Maryland. You knew Maryland was going to win. I didn't know Maryland was going to win. You didn't know they were going to win. No, I did say they would win yesterday on the show though. You did. I'll say you, I'll say you did it. I really have, I really had my doubts, and I'll be honest with you, I think Turgeon had his doubts. Mm-hmm. If you watch the postgame, I know you were tied up. If you watch the postgame presser later, he said that he was really worried coming in this game because the way they lost the two inferior teams. And uh, I agree with it, and they should have been worried. And yet, look at the way they played, with the way they came back. They never held their heads down. 23 to 11, Mason. That game was on the verge of becoming a blowout the wrong way. And yet they inched their way back. They really didn't do it with great offense. You know, they really no. didn't. I mean, they wound up shooting uh, for the game. Let me see here. 38%. Six for 20 from the three-point line. Now, they only had uh, 11 turnovers, which for them is good. And we also didn't talk about, you know, Wiggins has to learn how effective he is. He's got to watch his own film, how effective he is at driving to the bucket. And he, he runs hot and cold with the three point shooting, but when he goes to the bucket, I guarantee you he's shooting 70% or yeah. getting fouled. The pull-up jumpers really aren't there from Aaron Wiggins, but you're right. He does need to be an attacking. He's got to have an attacking mindset if they want to do anything going forward, but they'll be back tomorrow. 1130. How do you see it tomorrow? I mean, we give Maryland a fighting chance because they're sky high right now. And the fact that Michigan hasn't played since Sunday, Maryland will have played the day. I think it works in their favor. I really do that they're, you know, Maryland think, and Maryland and Michigan state were cold as hell at the beginning of that game. Yeah. And, and that's what I was going to say early on, it can help you out, but late game, there's always a surge from that one seed. And that one seed of course is the Michigan Wolverines. So the game actually tipped at 1140. It was 1130 on the big 10. Uh, schedule and I and I guess it will be the same tomorrow. So Wait, what time is the schedule for? Eleven thirty again. Right. Good. Good. Michigan's playing tonight. All right. They're not playing till tonight. Oh no, they're by. They got a buyout for. Yeah. Time. Yep. Yeah. 
I don't know if it's good or bad, but maybe we play a better morning team. I don't know, but uh, let's see what happens. The first time we played Michigan, we started off like a ball of fire, but you live by the three and you die by it. Mm-hmm. They got to drive to the bucket. That's their strength. That's what they should do. And, uh, you know, Michigan State did have nine offensive rebounds today, which was more than what they've had, but they could not convert them. And uh, they Maryland just made them look pedestrian. And they're not a pedestrian team, but they, I think it's a matchup, Mason. I think it's strictly a matchup. It and, is. It is. Uh, I'm anxious to see what Coach Izzo has to say. And um, so tomorrow, I'm going to have you on as well. I got uh, Wayne coming on at first. And then, uh, Todd and then you, but we'll know, we will know what happened in the second game when we come on, even though it won't be hurt till Saturday. So it kind of works out perfect. And we'll also, there is a huge lacrosse game this weekend, Maryland and Rutgers three against four. So uh, check out the sports maven on Saturday, but are we going to do a post tomorrow? We should do yeah, a post Yeah, we'll do be doing a post game tomorrow. Uh, after the Turks hopefully take down Michigan, but whatever the result is, we will be back uh, tomorrow. And as always, you're gonna, have to pull me off, you're gonna have to pull me off the roof of the house if we beat Michigan, all right? Because I'm, <laughs> I mean, the way that we've got handled two times in a row doesn't bode well. But you know what? You've been to these Big Ten tournaments. You've seen it. You know how many times did Michigan under Beeline go into the tournament? Nobody gave her prayer. And next thing you know, they're cut down the nets. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's the thing. And leaving our viewers with, with this last last word here, it's almost been a year to the day since uh, Wayne, myself, and Jordan were getting on a plane to go to the right. tournament last year. And we didn't end up going. It's almost been a year of no videos on this channel. Uh, we had some football post games, but we haven't really been here basketball season. So we appreciate you all listening to the shows, listening to the podcast, listening to us on the radio, but it's good to be back, Bruce, uh, here hey, on the YouTube something show. you got to remember, though, we not, might not have done many post games live, but we have over, over a million minutes on the screen and a, million, yeah. a couple million views. You don't have to miss us. We're all over the place. And, uh, you know, we thank uh, all our sponsors, Rick Jacklich and uh, Meyer Consulting and Viner Consulting, and uh, that will be it for today. Yes, it will, and we'll be back tomorrow uh, breaking right. down the Terps game against Michigan.